Hello, my name is Laura Mosqueda, and I'm delighted that we can show you what the next phase of your training could look like. Tech School of Medicine, we pride ourselves on challenging paradigms and thinking outside of the box. The amount of exposure that we get as students at LA County and Keck and all these different sites is incredible. The training you get here is as hands-on as it could be. Good morning, Mr. Reed. Oh, do you have the CT scan? Yeah. Let's pull up that CT scan. So this is the CT scan from the first day. We take on the toughest challenges, the toughest cases. We take on the biggest questions for research to try and make a difference and improve human health. We are smack in the middle of it all, right here uh, in this health sciences campus. So we have a county hospital right across the street that has incredible, not only inpatient, but ambulatory facilities. Right across the street in the other direction, we have our Keck Hospital with wonderful ambulatory and outpatient surgery sorts of facilities. Then on my right, we have our Norris Comprehensive Cancer Hospital. And then just across the street, we have our major research buildings too. Research and education are really the foundations upon which everything else at the School of Medicine is, is founded on. You have multitudes of opportunities to do bench work, uh, clinical research, translational research, and really take your work from the bench side to the bedside. Hello. Hello. Hi, Lauren. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. Morning. This week, in fact, we've had a sickle cell patient, an aplastic anemia patient who came for treatment. We get uh, TTP patients. We have three to five autologous stem cell transplant patients on at any given time. I've been here 44 years, and there's two common foundational principles. Number one, patient interests supersede self-interest. This is absolutely critical. Your levels are coming down, looking good. Um, so you're thinking discharge? Yeah, I think you can go home today. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the second is that this is a teaching center, and we talk about the very famous professors that are here to teach you. But the one thing everybody learns is that the master teachers are the patients themselves. And so, sir, we're going to show you what you actually had before and after. Okay. okay. This is what you came in with. <laughs> That's what you came in with. <laughs> Nearly locked out that entire lung, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You must have a passion. Part of your mission is to take care of the underserved. We are serving the underserved. We are serving those that are more socioeconomically advantaged. But essentially, you want to serve everyone and everybody and serve them the same, regardless of who they are. So who's our next patient? In here? Yeah. Okay. Yes. These are the patients that, you know, it's not just a pleasure to serve, it's an honor to serve. They're my people. It's, I see myself reflected in the, in the population. I really wanted to come back home in more ways than one. This could be my mom. This could be my dad. This could be my uncle. Um, and no other place could afford me that opportunity besides here. It's been a, the most challenging and rewarding thing I've done in my life, being here. Uh, I've been pushed in ways that I didn't think were possible. We're looking for that spark, that spark in a person that's going to become a good physician who's going to put the patient first. Can we get Dr. Dixon here, please? Can we get some backup? No matter how dramatic this scenario is, it's something that happens. The patient uh, just went non-responsive, her blood pressure dropped. We are pretty much in the ORs from day one. We do cases that other places um, just read about in textbooks. You really want to care for the caregiver. Um, our goal is to prevent burnout before it even happens. It takes about eight months till you start thinking, I can do this, I can master this. Do you see anything worrisome at all? No, I don't. This is not a movie. This is for real. Can you show us two fingers? It's really important that not only do they listen to what the attending has to say, 
but equally important, the attending needs to listen to what the resident has to say. Show me where your pain is. We're here to learn. There's no dumb questions ever. We really want an inclusive environment where you can be the thought and the change leader on our campus. If you come to USC, you will be part of a close-knit, collaborative Trojan community. It's so important to know that you're part of the Trojan family. That's not just a catchphrase here, it's something that we really need. We care about the people who are here. We care about you after you leave. It's a lifelong commitment on our part. Hi, I'm Chris Kao. I'm one of the chief residents at LAC USC Pediatrics. I'm really excited to tell you a little bit about our program. Our program has 11 categorical pediatrics residents. We're also joined by medicine pediatrics residents. We rotate through all, all different places of the hospital. We have our own clinics. We also work on specialty services, the emergency department, the hospital floor, the ICUs, both pediatric ICU and the neonatal ICU. So it's a very broad experience. I feel like we have enough people to where we have like really good coverage for a lot of the services, but we're also a really close-knit program. Everyone knows each other, the faculty know all of the residents and all of the classes, and it's a place where we have the phone numbers of all of the attendings, the faculty. When you step into the eighth floor, and you see the way it's kind of decorated differently from the rest of the hospital, it really does show how we provide um, a lot of extra thought into the care. So in pediatrics, you kind of have multiple patients. You have the, the child, but you also are treating the family as well. And it's really crucial that you have the parents and like, their immediate family on board uh, when you're thinking about the care. And I think that just the extra thoughts in like the way that we have extra uh, photographs and different colors and uh, that we have a child life specialist who can kind of provide a little bit of like playtime and normalcy to their care when they're honestly having probably the worst days of their life um, is something that I, we take a lot of pride in in pediatrics. I think we have a really great view also being at the top of the hospital. And um, I often, when I go into the room with patients, like this will be one of the things I reference. You know, it's good morning, how are you feeling? I really love the view that you have in the room. Uh, and so I'm really glad that a lot of patients, you know, get, get a little bit of view when they're staying in the hospital. Uh, most of the rooms that we have are also single patient bedrooms. The pediatric wards or the pediatric floor kind of provides like the backbone of intern year. So that's going to be patients that have gone to the emergency department and now admitted to the hospital and kind of need to continue their care. And then a common thread throughout the year also is going to be the clinics. So continuity clinic is you have your own panel of patients and you see them for well child care or for sick visits or you know follow ups of certain problems that we've been uh, following. And so that's going to be another part of the experience. And then and kind of peppered throughout your, your three years, you're going to have specialty rotations. So, you know, any of the different organ systems, so neurology, cardiology, endocrinology, and you can work, you work both in the clinics and then you also serve as a consult in the hospital as well for the, um, for the hospital teams. Um, and then you do a little bit more of the intensive care units as you go on. So you get introduced to the uh, neonatal ICU, you, the, the pediatric ICU, and you also go to every delivery that's, that goes on in the hospital, whether it's a planned delivery or it's a, like a crash C-section that happens down in the emergency department. Uh, so you get a lot of experience uh, around childbirth as well. So your time in the NICU, you have a lot of the most intense moments that you'll experience during residency for sure. Uh, this is an experience that you'll have in, in both ICUs, but uh, it's a particularly sensitive time just around childbirth. A lot of moments where you're holding your breath, waiting for the baby to cry, to breathe, to move. Luckily, most of the time, you get to breathe a sigh of relief, and that can be a really euphoric moment, bring tears to your eyes, and. Um, you kind of balance the, the difficult situation that a lot of these babies are in with a lot of like the best moments that you have, like the moment where you bring the baby over to the mom for the first time is an incredibly rewarding experience. It's one of the things that when I reflect on like my training, those are some of my top moments for sure. We have a, a newborn nursery area and in our, our hospital, 
the babies room in with moms and they only actually go to the nursery area um, when they need to do something like get phototherapy. But as a baby friendly hospital, you know, we have the babies in with the moms as they're recovering so that they can bond, uh, promote breastfeeding. And, you know, we will do the exam in the room, kind of show mom what we're looking for. And uh, yeah, we keep them together as, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, so the nursery area is, um, so we kind of think of all the newborns existing in newborn nursery, but really it's kind of the mom and baby area with the, the separated nursery only being for special circumstances. LACUSC County, that is basically, we pretty much just do our work here if you're in the pediatrics program. Most patients that get admitted to the hospital floors or to the ICU are gonna come through our emergency department first. And uh, most of our patients will go to the specific pediatric ER. We do have a resuscitation area, so if there's a really bad motor vehicle accident, then typically this would mean that you know, adults and kids are involved. Then they will go there and sometimes they will come up from that, that place too. But um, yeah, the pediatric ER is where we get a lot of our business on the, on the, on the floors. And you know, we do a month out of the year in the pediatric emergency room as well. So the pediatric ER is a really good experience because you, know, you have completely undifferentiated patients. Like patients truly where the, all you have is like the triage note where it says, so this is their issue. They come in and um, the, no workup has been done. You're the, you're the first provider to talk to them. And um, so that can be really useful as well. We do a lot of our procedures down in the emergency department as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a very valuable experience for sure. One thing that's nice when you work in pediatrics is you're just around a lot of people who just love to be with kids. You know, kids have this, like, this joy that kind of brings this like inner joy out of you. And it's really easy, I think, especially like your natural reaction is to kind of like, you talk a little bit more high pitched, a little bit more gentle, and you're just, it's just, um, kids just do so many interesting things, so we just ask a lot of questions. But certainly, you know, part of, and you're talking to kids, is just really listening and seeing where they're at in their development and like, what they're trying to tell you. Practice and just like being, and being present with, with kids. You know, one of the areas in which I like, thought, where I probably most critically thought about like my interaction with with patients in general, but certainly, you know, with kids, that's our focus, is our development rotation. I mean, I think one of the big parts of that also was, you know, um, just being observed, talking to patients, and getting feedback on, like, how to really actively listen and um, how to kind of take what everyone is saying, like, what are they asking for, or what are they trying to tell you, and learn to not interrupt, I think, is a really big um, feedback that, you know, a lot of, um, young doctors get, you know, just, um, you, sometimes you think that you're, be, you're being more efficient when you kind of ask pointed questions and you want to just kind of get through your list of things that you want to know. But I have found that like the open-ended question that actually, you know, we learn in medical school that you know, kind of gets reinforced again later is just really, really actually a very efficient way to, to get to know people. I think that stories are a lot of the reason why people go into pediatrics as well. I mean, in medicine in general, but in pediatrics, just knowing like the, the kid exists like in a, in a setting, a specific setting, and um, to hear about who do they live with, like, what is it like growing up, where do they live, what kind of adversity have they had to, to overcome to just be where they are today. I think, um, yeah, we just love stories for sure as doctors. A crucial part of like your doctoring experience is your patient experience. Like who is your patient population? And LAC USC is in a very unique place. So it's in East LA. Our program s serves as like the medical hub for the foster children. And so we have a lot of patients who have had to overcome a lot of adversity and have disadvantages in many areas of their life. And I think what draws a lot of people to our program and has them stick around to work here is you get a sense of purpose of saying, when you come to our clinic, our hospital floor, our intensive care unit, we will provide you the best care that you could get anywhere. And so you may have disadvantages outside of the hospital, but when you come here, you know, that's, we are gonna bring you the best. Um, and I think that just being surrounded by people like that 
it's, uh, it's, it's just the right mentality for practicing medicine. And you get people who are drawn to social justice, who are drawn to advocacy, who are drawn to action outside of just medicine as well. And I really like being around those people. A lot of our subspecialties don't have fellows on them. So when you're the resident on the subspecialty, you serve as the main point of contact. And it's a, really a culture thing to, if you're on the hospital floor and you need to call a consult, you look up who's the resident on nephrology. You, you call them directly and you kind of ask all of your questions and everything kind of is filtered through that resident. And so when you're the resident on the service, you're the person. And you work then directly, obviously with the patients, but then you work directly with the subspecialist yourself. And you get so much more out of the experience when um, it's just you and, and, the, and the specialist. All of our attendings are very approachable and we feel comfortable contacting them, we feel comfortable asking for help. And I think that's just really important when you're trying to kind of better yourself, that you're not afraid to ask questions, that kind of like the, like the barrier to asking questions is lower. You know, being a trauma center, our hospital does see a lot of really acute sick, complicated patients. And one of the things that I think a lot of us take pride in is that when we compare the complexity of our patients to the outcomes, our outcomes are very good for the patients that we see. And I think that anyone who wants to do training or who wants to work somewhere, wants to work in a system in which you know, the performance of the team is good. And I think that the patient population that we serve is so important to us and I, I, I take a lot of pride in the fact that we are actually doing really well with, with our, for our patients and um, making sure that you know, we can get them home safe to their family. Our residency program just has a really great combination of um, everyone is very mission driven, very humble in the fact that you know, we, we want to serve a, a disadvantaged patient population. And I think that the environment is very, I feel like we're all very, just very close with each other. I don't see people hesitate to, you know, fill in for people when it's needed. Uh, you know, when people are out sick or people have, you know, different circumstances. I always feel like I can ask people to have my back for sure. Because residency is hard. I think it's you want to be in a place. Uh, in which you, you know, you're not asked to just sink or swim, but to really be alongside other people. And I'm really happy with the people that I get to, to work with every day. Once you've done a residency or a fellowship here, you are ready for the next phase of your career. And that might be going into clinical practice, it might be going into academia, it might be going on for more training. Whatever it is, be assured that you are going to be the most well-prepared person possible for that next part of your career.